Hello, peace, peace and love to you all. Um, welcome to another video of mine. Uh, basically, another, another video, another presentation to you guys into the mind of myself. I, I'm starting to think of these videos to be more like a, <clears throat> a video diary of myself to kind of keep in the backlogs for the new future. So anything that could be looked back into, oh, okay, what were things like back then? Or myself and people personal to me can refer back to this, to these sets of videos and be like, oh, okay, so this is what he was saying back then. Um, I do think that videos like this, that is the, the beauty of the internet and the beauty of just of modern technology and that you can actually keep these videos, documents, files, as a form of um, time capsule as to how things were back in a certain time. So welcome, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, you clearly find these these videos, these recordings useful to you. And I personally appreciate that. You've you've gone out and got yourself a copy of, of my book. You've, you've followed the brand, well, you followed Black Falcon for a while now. You've seen our T-shirts. You've experienced some of our T-shirts, and you understand the value of of my company, of my story that I've decided to um, create, produce, and to um, give to yourselves around the world. It's it's a beautiful time. It's a beautiful day, and it's a wonderful opportunity to kind of use the technology, use the tools and equipment at my disposal to outlay everything over to you as well. And I'm, and I'm happy that I've been able to do that. So thank you, God bless, and let's get into it. So today I'm going to talk about, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about how writing, how my writing has affected me personally. What has actually happened around me internally externally as a result of me committing myself to the never-ending hours of just doodling on my notebook that i was talking about previously so yeah let's get into it so but before i get into it let's let's talk about my book itself if you don't know now you know I have a book out there called Drax, D-R-A-X. It's currently selling quite well on Amazon. Loads of good reviews. Um, it's had some really good feedback. And essentially, the point of doing all these videos is to kind of just spread the word out there a little bit more so that more people can understand and appreciate the book a lot more. Um, that's really it. And ultimately... I just want to, I want more and more people to read my book. I want more and more people to be entertained by my story, to understand, to understand where my viewpoint was, was when, when writing so that people can benefit. They can learn from me. They can, they can uh, garner something from, from all of this and they can potentially over the lessons that I produce for myself when writing all of these um, these tales they can learn to improve whatever situation that they're in or if they're inspired by it look th there's an endless stream of possibilities that can be um, manifested by embracing someone else's story so we're all one one nation one one song um, all one nation under the groove as it's been famously said in the past I think it was Funkadelic that said that one nation under the groove yeah, I'm going to go with that. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to check out my check out my website, you get to find out a little bit more about me, get to find out more about what I've got to offer as a as a company. Please do check out blackfalcon.co.uk. That is www.blackfalcon.co.uk you will see everything you'll see all my t-shirts my hoodies my sweatshirts and and yeah that is that is where my where my baby is at the moment so go ahead and check it out so writing how has writing 
affected me. In, in, in one of my previous videos, I spoke about the circumstance that was surrounding me when I was writing Drax. When I was writing that book, when I was expressing myself, when I was putting all of my annoyances, my frustrations, effectively just putting my story out there in this book. And what I got out of it was, as I said also previously before, was that it was a healthy outlet for me to, for me to get my, my, uh, my situation out there healthily rather than resulting to drugs, alcohol, skirt chasing, whatever. Self, rather self, self-destructive behavior. And that's what I was really proud of. So in terms of what I got out of the writing, the number one point that I wanted to just get through to you was I felt a strong sense of catharsis. Catharsis or cathartic to the point where I ha I, it felt like I got a lot of stuff out of my chest. Like... I don't feel that I, I didn't feel that I needed to to get issues um, addressed through any self-destructive behavior because it's all put on to onto the pages now and that was the beautiful thing about it a sense of accomplishment a sense of 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 relief ah <sighs> it's all out now so that is the number one thing I got out of writing this book. It was a strong sense of, you know, accomplishment. I've always, I've always kind of said this and it's been a little bit vulgar and I've kept it to myself, but there's two things that myself as a man or men in general like to fight for because there's no, because there's, because, there's, because there aren't greater feelings than these. And number one is, um, orgasms and accomplishments yeah yeah i would actually rank an accomplishment above the orgasm because an accomplishment is something that's the feeling of winning the the feeling of overcoming a situation becoming stronger becoming smarter that's a much more stronger much more self-empowering uh feeling than uh, at the 30 second of pleasure of of doing your business with someone so hey i've had both and i'm telling you that winning is a much more fulfilling feeling than most things in life accomplishments are incredible when you when you've when you set that milestone when you set that goal and you've accomplished it it's it's one of the best feelings in the world when you've kind of set something out and you know it's to do with your purpose and you know it's something to do with you that you were supposed to uh, that you were supposed to achieve for yourself incredible feeling i love it it's it's once you win a couple more times once you win first time second time third time fourth time fourth time it it it's like a it's like an addiction it's like a drug when you win Winning is an incredible, incredible feeling. I rank that above anything else in life. You know, who cares about chasing women when you can just win and and just feel this and just feel the satisfaction from that. And they're all gonna come uh, come for you after after winning anyway. If you don't know if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you need to go out there and start winning yourself. So I know that was a little bit out of character, but I thought I'd say that. So the other thing that came out, that came out of writing is, uh, well, I would, I'll be more specific and talk about following the completion of Drax and, and publishing that, was I felt, a, I felt that there were subtle changes happening in my life. I'll say this without spoiling the narrative of the story, but on the previous video, or one of the previous videos, I spoke about men's mental health 
and how it hasn't been addressed and what and how right and of course I've addressed in this video how writing has been a healthy outlet for me to express myself and get things out of things out of the chest and through catharsis but there were things that were changing so there was one particular scenario that I described in the book about a particular character who you will who you will come to meet and those of you who've read would already know who this guy is but I don't want to mention it in order to spoil it he has he is or he has a history of struggling with anxiety with uh yeah he suffers from chronic anxiety and essentially just to move the story on he he learned that the way for him to deal with it was through boxing he learned how to box and that's what i'll say on that i don't want to give it away man otherwise otherwise there'll be no point in you in you uh, reading it but ultimately he learns that the discipline of the martial art of boxing the artwork the, the artwork the movement i should say of boxing the power of that um the discipline the self-discipline the mental clarity you get after after a um a sparring session it, it's difficult to describe unless you are an athlete yourself uh, yourself unless you practice some form of martial art unless you go to the gym often or go for a walk or go for a run or something but ultimately that's what he learns he learns that through discipline through disciplining the mind through through um, the focus of 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 the mission that's how he was able to overcome his um his anxieties and his and dealing with his mental challenge so how did that change me how did writing that change me well at the time i don't recall me actually going through any form of anxiety but a year or two after writing it even quite recently i should say i've actually had bouts of anxiety where i'm just anxious about things just just not happening just things just are not working out the way that i really want them to and the good thing is is that i was able to draw upon the solution that i wrote down for my character in the book and apply that to myself at the time of writing i had no interest in practicing boxing but after writing about practicing boxing i ended up practicing boxing that wasn't even a conscious decision i kind of fell into the boxing which is interesting you may have you know some of my videos you may have seen in my instagram stories or even in some of my tiktoks that i have practiced boxing and i've even done the sparring where i've actually got my opponent actually trying to hurt me and that feeling that you get after after surviving that kind of workout there is no better feeling than that knowing that um despite all your opponent's efforts um you still come out unshaved you know and of course i've got a face that's worth more you know i've got a face that's worth more than most people's mortgages so i've got a lot to lose by anyone trying to hit me here so so ultimately this that you know that 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 feeling that fear of embracing the fear of you know that just that uh, that adrenaline rush that feeling that you get when you when you are climbing the mountain and you don't know if you might fall down or not um, but even if you do fall down you don't know if you're going to be okay just that feeling those of you who've kind of been on the ring or kind of taken on some level of martial arts will understand where I'm coming from. But when you face, but ultimately what everyone would understand is when you face your fear, whatever that is, when you face it and you afterwards, you kind of get that deep breath, you kind of like, oh, wow, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be kind of feeling afterwards. That is something that uh, is, is, is difficult to describe in a 15 minute well 15 20 minute video with you so i put it on paper and but i put it on paper as 
the method as how my character has actually developed. They were suffering from this challenge, but they've overcome it through this outlet. So that's the one thing that I saw changing in my life. I ended up falling into a sport that I never actually saw myself doing, but following me writing things down on paper, things started happening, which is interesting because when you screw, effectively the book ended up becoming an, an indirect subconscious script to life. Um, all but all, all except the, uh, the criminal aspects of the book, of course, as well, obviously. So the other thing I got from, from the book, from me writing this is I developed a stronger sense of empathy for people. Now, before writing this, well, whilst writing this book initially back in, I think 2015, I actually ended up taking some drama classes. Don't know how I fell into that. I can't even remember why I did it. I think it was just out of curiosity. There were just some classes I used to take after work. So when I took the classes, I learned about the fundamentals of acting, how to read a script and how to abandon your current sense of self to then submit yourself into the character that's put ahead of you through the written script but ultimately being able to add a lot of your own personal personal experiences onto the character so that the character appears more authentic to the audience. Because I was practicing the theater, the, uh, the classical theater kind of acting. How do, you, how, do you express, how do you express a character's emotions through the body language, through the clarity of of your speech, through your tone of voice, through um, eye contact. But you, of course, because it's drama and theatre, you have to position your body, making sure that, yes, you're, I'm facing you as another character, but my body has to be positioned that I can't turn my back away from the audience. That's the same thing with boxing or with any form of martial art. You never turn your back on your opponent. That's the one thing you don't, you do not do. You never ever turn your back on your opponent. It's a, it's a form of, well, I think it's a form of disrespect when you do that. Of course, when you're trying to hype up a fight, people kind of play all sorts of funny games, but you don't do that. And of course, it's easy for someone to knock you out. So it's the same thing in life. You never turn your back on life too. So I think you can kind of see the metaphors between the, 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 um, the liberal arts, the martial arts, and how that kind of conveys itself through real life. So that's the interesting point. Um, I developed a more stronger sense of empathy. What, what I mean by empathy is you kind of, and what I got from drama school, drama classes, is that you learn how to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And when you put yourself under someone else's shoes, you tend to not so much feel sorry for them, but you kind of see things in their perspective. Oh, if I was in their shoes, okay, this is this is how they see it. This is how they this is how they are are seeing things. I'm not them, but if I was to put myself in their position, this is how I would potentially see it. That contributes a lot to soft skills at work too. Um, if you know, I'm a project manager. I work in, you know, I used to work. Well, I still kind of work in the construction industry. Project management is very much a people-centric, focused area of the industry in which you have to, you have to um, embrace people. You have to learn how to talk to people. Same thing with what I'm doing with Black Falcon. I have to learn how to embrace and understand the various feedback and potential criticisms that I can that I might get from yourselves as as customers so how do you how do I deal with that so that was the primary benefit of 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 gaining empathy you tend to just understand the people around you a lot more you end up becoming a very good listener so that you can learn from other people so that was that 
And finally, last point, I learned how to be more confident. You become more confident through your challenges. You become more confident be through uh, the over the 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 sequential overcoming the, the sequences of events that take place prior to the end result of what you're trying to achieve. I always like to I used an an equation as to how confidence is built is. Um, I've completely forgotten it. It literally was in my head and then it's and then it's decided to disappear. But ultimately, confidence comes through trial, trial and error. Uh, you try, you get hit, you keep trying, you get hit, you keep trying, you get hit, you keep trying and trying and trying. But then what happens is you reach a point where it gets to a point where you've made so many mistakes, you've learned so many lessons that it's almost impossible for you to lose. What I always like to say is, there's no such thing as losing. Because what is losing? If you've lost something, in inverted commas, you've lost, but ultimately you've learned something from that experience. So technically you haven't actually lost anything then, have you? You have gained, yeah? Your girlfriend just just cheated on you. Horrible feeling, I know, I've been there girlfriend cheated on you uh you lost money okay but what did you get from it what did you learn you learned to be much more diligent you learned to be much more uh smarter with your money you, you learned to maybe not trust people at well or rather not give people so much easy access into your life like that that might be a learn so what did you actually lose not much no you've actually gained from that experience so it's the experience that kind of builds the confidence within you. It's the mistakes that you made. Uh, it's the it's the people that you spoke with. It's everything that's part of your own individual hero's journey that's made you that that makes you into becoming the champion that you already are, because it was already in you before you even started the journey anyway. So that is I'm going to end this now because I'm talking longer than I used to, than I usually do. That is effectively how writing affected me. I learned so much more. I learned so much more about myself. So, yeah, get out there, purchase a purchase a copy of the book if you haven't already. I don't know what you have. I don't know what you've been reading if you haven't read my book yet. What, Rich Dad Poor Dad? Everyone's read that one. I mean, to be fair, that's a children's book compared to my one. Mine's actually a an actual story with a beginning, middle, and end. So, no disrespect, I'm just messing. But, yeah, get out there, get the book, head over to the store, I'll see you there, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.